Hello and welcome back. This is video number six and we're going to dive into the Facebook pixel and talk about the different variables and settings, which according to Facebook is also known as standard events. Basically all that means is that you're going to have a different code or different keyword for different scenarios. So we're taking a look right now at a standard Facebook pixel. Now I've blurred out or put X's in the area of my Facebook pixel ID. So you know that this is going to be your Facebook pixel ID. Now, if you go to facebook.com and you look for their standard events, you're going to see a list of different event codes. So you can see add to cart. This can track anytime somebody adds an item to the cart. So if you're selling maybe physical items or e-commerce or even digital items and they add it to the cart, you want to use the standard event code here. And what that means is you are going to take this code and put it in your pixel code. And then you're going to put that code on that page. You have another one called add payment info. This tracks when the payment information is added in the checkout flow. So you're going to add that to that specific page. Now, some of these will relate to you. Some of them will not. So you can see complete registration. This is great for if somebody is trying to fill out a form and you're trying to get them to fill that form out and you want to track, did they fill that form or not? If they didn't, then this code would not be triggered. If they did, then of course they would land on the, the page after they fill out the form and you would put that code on that page. We can see contact, which is if they went to a contact page and they contacted you, you could put that on the code and on that specific page. So as you can see, there are tons and tons of different standard events that relate to different actions. So we have donate, we have find location, we have initiate checkout, we have lead. Lead is whenever somebody signs up on your email list, or they could be a form submission. They could sign up for a trial. They could land on a specific page where you would deem them to be a lead and you would use that code right here. And then we have purchase. They also have a code for that and a value. So if you're using USD in the United States of America and you would put the number here. So if it was $47, you would put 47.00 USD. If you were not using USD and you were using your own country's money symbol here, it could be Canadian, it could be AUS for Australia, you could put that here. And then we have schedule, we have search, we have start trial, we have submit application, we have subscribe, we have view content. So view content could simply mean they're viewing a special piece of content. So it could be something like the blog post, right? So we could send them to the blog post. You would make sure that the pixel code has this specific code in it. So why don't we go back to the pixel code and let me show you what you need to do. So let's say for example, view content. So you're going to highlight this, click copy, and then you're going to go back to the pixel code here. And the only item that you want to change is this item here. So where it says FBQ parentheses track comma page view, we're going to remove that and then we're going to put that here. So in this case, it's view content and page view is going to be removed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this code and put it on the special piece of content page where we want to track it. Now, if it's a lead, we simply remove this and type lead. Now, when you run your Facebook ad campaign, what's going to happen is in the campaign, you'll see these keywords. So you can also put your own keyword as well. And it's going to tell you the keywords, how many people visited it, 
and all that. And you yourself will know, okay, so this many people out of 100 people came, 10 people, 10% became a lead. So you'll see leads 10. And that will give you an idea of what is actually converting. So let's do something else. Let's go back up here and let's do purchase. So we're going to copy this. We're going to go back here. And instead of a lead, we're going to copy and paste this here. And it says track purchase value. Let's say it's $47 and that's all you need to do. And you're going to need to to take this piece of code and put it on the page that they see after they purchase. So whatever page that they are sent to or redirected to immediately, you need to put that piece of code on that page. Now, let's say for example that we have a funnel and the funnel is an opt-in page. So in that case, the opt-in page is going to have a pixel code and the track will be something like this. So the opt-in page could be a page view or view content and then the next page after that, if they subscribe, could be a lead. So throughout your funnel, you have different steps, you have different pages, and on those different pages, you'll have different pixel codes. Now, while that might seem a little bit complex right now, it really isn't. It's a matter of just changing the keyword and putting the code on the right page. And then of course, using the Facebook Pixel Helper Google Chrome extension to go back to the page, make sure that pixel is on the page, and it'll tell you if the pixel is on the page and specifically what it is. So if it's a lead, it'll show a lead. If it's a purchase, it'll show a purchase. And it really is quite easy once you get the hang of it. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven. Let's talk about custom audiences. Now, when I showed you the visual mind map of how everything works and the different scenarios, we talked about custom audiences being a ad targeting option that lets you find people who either took an action or either didn't take the action that you wanted. So as you can see here, according to facebook.com, a custom audience is an ad targeting option that lets you find people who already know your business on Facebook. So with that said, to get here, all you have to do is up the top, click this and then click audiences. And then you'll see a drop down menu that says create custom audience and you want to click that. Now you will see an option on creating a lookalike audience, but that's not what we're going to do. You don't really want to create a lookalike audience until you have run enough Facebook ads and you've collected a certain amount of data to know that the lookalike audience is correct. So what is a lookalike audience? A lookalike audience, according to Facebook, is let's say we run a thousand people to an opt-in page. And out of a thousand people, we have about a hundred people who opt in. Now out of the 100 people that opt in, we want to figure and reach similar people based on the 100 people that converted. So what you can do is you can create a lookalike audience with Facebook. And what Facebook will do is it'll go out into the database and find people that are very similar to the people that have opted in. Now that is super powerful no other platform can do that. So what you're really doing is you're tapping into Facebook's database according to the data that you have found and comparing and finding people that are similar. You could do that with a purchase. Maybe you have a thousand people that visited a sales page and out of those people, those we have eventually a hundred people that buy. So we wanna find a hundred people that are similar. So that's what a lookalike audience is. Now, what we want to do in this specific retargeting campaign is to create 
a custom audience. So these are the different custom audiences that you can create. Now, I'm not going to talk about how to create one just yet. We'll talk more about that in the next video. But as you can see here, as far as custom audiences go, you can find, let's say, for example, an email list of your customers or your subscribers and upload them here. And then you can retarget them. So maybe somebody opted in for a freebie. You could upload that here and you can retarget them and try to get them to purchase a product that might be similar to what they signed up for. So even though they fulfilled the action of signing up and giving you their email address, you can still retarget them. They're still potential buyers. Website traffic, you can create a custom audience based upon people who visit your website. So we could say anybody who visits our opt-in page or anybody who visits our blog post, we want to retarget them. It doesn't have to be that. It can be people who opted in and who saw the next page, or maybe they clicked a button and they saw a next page. It doesn't matter what page it is. You can do any page that you want. As long as the Facebook pixel is on it, you can track it. You can create a custom audience. Now, app activity is something that most of you will likely not use. You can create a list of people who launched your app or your game or took a specific action. Offline activity, you can create a list of people who interacted with your business, your in-store business by phone, by offline channels, and all that. For engagement, you can create a list of people who engage with your content on Facebook or Instagram. Now, most of you are going to use the customer file or the website traffic. Very, very few people actually use the app activity or the offline activity unless you have a local business. So one of these two, most likely you're going to start out like this if you don't have a list. So you'll start here. So now that you understand the different types of custom audiences that you can create without overwhelming you, let's move on to the next video and we'll talk about how to create the custom audiences correctly.